Welcome back. We continue our explanation of the simulated annealing algorithm. Uh, this is the second part of explaining how the algorithm itself works and the fourth part of the series in general. Um, so the advantages of simulated annealing uh, may be over um, genetic algorithms or over hill climbing. Hill climbing is another um, simple and easy to understand algorithm to uh, solve search problems. So the advantages are this algorithm is really good at avoiding the problem of getting caught or getting stuck in a, a local optimum, either local minima or local maxima, as we explained in the second video of this series. This concept is really important to understand, the concept of the local minima, the global minima, or the local maxima and the global maxima, right? And this algorithm, in general, it's quite good at finding a good solution, an approximate approximate global optimum so a good enough solution close to the optimum or to the best optimal solution of our problem so we spoke before about the analogy if you remember um, this slide from the previous video where we said we are going to have this analogy between uh, our problems when we do the programming and the real life problems uh, the, when the real actual annealing happens right in the metal uh, 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 state problems if you remember that we said the, the solutions in our combinatorial problem will be equivalent to states in a physical system and then the cost of of a solution will be will uh, be equivalent to the energy of a state so the cost of a solution is for example if we are if we're solving the traveling salesman problem as we do here then it will be the total distance of a tour that's the cost of uh, a, a solution right uh, and we mentioned before that we are going to jump out of a local minimum, right? And the way we do that is by accepting worse solution, a worse solution, worse than the solution that we have at hand. So how do we accept a solution and move to it if it is worse than the solution that we have at the moment, the, our, our current solution? How do we decide which solutions to accept? First, we have to check if the neighboring solution is better than our current solution. If it is, then we automatically accept it, unconditionally accept the solution because it's better than the current solution. If it is not better than the one we have, if it's worse, then we have two factors to consider. We can check how much worse the neighboring solution is, the new solution is, and then secondly, how high the current temperature of the system is. Remember the temperature variable that we are going to use, right? So two things to consider. Well, how much worse is it? And then how high the current temperature is. At higher temperatures, the system is more likely to accept, is more likely to accept solutions that are worse than the current solution, right? So we will more likely accept solutions which are worse than the current solution. And the math for this is quite simple. We are going to compute a value, we we'll call it a probability value, and it will be the exponential. This is e to the power of um, the energy of the current solution or the, or the uh, cost of the current solution, because we said energy now will be equivalent to cost. So the cost of the current solution minus the cost of the new solution of the neighboring solution that we mentioned, and we divide that by the current temperature of the system we uh, uh, compute e to the power of you know that value and then what we do is we generate a random number r and then we check if if p is greater than r if that's true then we accept the new solution so this solution energy it can be uh, it should be maybe the cost of the current solution right and this is the cost of the neighboring solution i.e the new solution the cost or distance this is the cost or the distance in terms of uh, the traveling salesman problem so basically the smaller the change in energy or cost or distance i.e the quality of the solution and the higher the temperature the more likely it is for the algorithm to accept the solution okay uh, basically what that means is if if 
there's a small change in the distance or in the cost or in, in, in the energy between the current solution and the neighboring solution then this value will be quite small right and if the temperature is quite high then that fraction will be very very small right and then when we compute when we compute the exponent then it will more likely uh, be for the algorithm to accept the solution so um, having understood how we're going to go about this let's just think of it in terms of our algorithm this is what we're going to do we're going to start with an initial temperature a high value of initial temperature and then create a random initial solution right then we will start looping until we meet the stopping condition obviously we should have we must have a way out of the loop so we need to have a stopping condition our stopping condition can be either the system has sufficiently cooled so the temperature is very very low or we have found the solution we're looking for or maybe a good enough solution for example for the traveling salesman problem if we are targeting a certain distance a certain minimum distance then if we find a solution that meets that maybe e the total distance equals that distance or maybe slightly even less then we can stop looping there right now whilst looping we're going to do the following we're going to select a neighbor by making a small change to our current solution so we begin with initial solution then we change it a little bit that makes it makes it a slightly different solution now it's a neighboring solution because the change is not very very uh, uh, big after that we decide whether to move to that neighboring solution or not by computing its distance and then the distance of the current solution and then applying this formula that we mentioned before we calculate the probability and then generate the a random number r and check whether the probability is greater than r or not to accept or reject the new neighbor after that we decide whether to move to that neighbor or not as we mentioned and then we finally we decrease the temperature and we continue looping right it's a quite it's a nice and simple idea easy to understand and easy to implement the last thing or the last slide of this uh, video is when we initialize the temperature for better optimization when initializing the temperature variable we should select a temperature that will initially allow for practically any move against the current solution so we start with a really high temperature this will give the algorithm the ability to better explore the entire search space before cooling and settling in a more focused region of the search space so i'm going to stop here in the next video we'll start showing the implementation of the simulated an uh, annealing algorithm to solve the traveling salesman problem thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time